Ed and Eddie is one of my favorites. Something about that show invokes such a warm vibe that I love, especially when you contrast that with the conniving nature of the Ed boys. It's also fun to see the scam of the week or just whatever the general shenanigans will be. Add on to that the fun cast of characters that tend to serve as the antagonists of the Eds and that all comes together to create that aforementioned vibe. It's all in good fun uh, most of the time and I really love that. Also the school seasons are probably some of the comfiest episodes I've ever seen on Cartoon Network and I swear that's not an exaggeration. Also, also Marie is the best canker and the best girl and I will fight you on that. Now, with all that said, why was the video game made for this show so bad? Ugh. But before I get into that awful game, I just want to really quickly remind you to like the video and subscribe if you, you know, like the video. It means a lot and it helps out a lot more than you know. Cool? Cool. Alright, so let's get into this failed scam. <laughs> Okay, so to be fair to this game, I'm going to start with the positives. Well, positive, because there's only one real positive to this game, and even then it's only kind of a positive. The people who made this game definitely understood the idea of Ed and Eddie and what the show is about. In concept, this could have been really good and it could have successfully transferred the essence of this show into game form. The game is broken up into levels that are essentially different scams of random stuff that the boys would do in the show. Stuff like trying to get into Jimmy's birthday party after not being invited and trying to get to the Jawbreaker store while the Jawbreakers were free. I also liked how the end of the mission usually ends up being the Ed boys having their schemes backfire on them and trying to get out of it. There's also the fact that the other kids from the coldest sack tend to be the antagonists that you have to avoid or deal with in classic Ed boy fashion. Well. Not really, but mm, kind of. In between the missions, you run around the cul-de-sac in a sort of hub world to go to the next mission and look for collectibles. They always love when they give you a chance to walk around in a setting and see how things connect. It's kind of like exploring the South Park world in those games, and I love that. There was so much going for this game design-wise, and if you turned off the video here, don't do that, this game would seem like a pretty good game for its time. But then you start playing the game and you realize, oh yeah, this game is dog water, complete trash. It kills me inside. Truly, it's an excruciating experience with awful enemies, abhorrent visuals, and it's just an overall blunder execution-wise. Yeah, well, at least they use the music from the show, so that's good. And the cutscenes before the missions are pretty nice. They feel true to form to the show, even if they look uh, just off. So first of all, we have the visuals, and I mean, the characters look pretty terrifying, especially in cutscenes. If I put this and the meat cane design side by side, I couldn't tell you which one unnerves me more. It really drives home that feeling that something is off and completely accentuates the feeling of emptiness in the cul-de-sac. Which actually, remember how I said you can explore the cul-de-sac in between missions? It sucks. No one's there and it feels so dead. Okay, that's not true. There are some characters, but they don't do anything. I wanted to jump into the next mission immediately because it was so depressing. Every time I go back to the cul-de-sac, I feel like Jimmy in the Cardboard City episode, or the intro to the Ed and Eddie movie where everything is empty and you have that sinking feeling that something went wrong. I feel like Kevin's gonna jump scare me or some shit. Sure, in the show, there are no characters that seemingly exist outside of the main cast, but they inject so much life into the cul-de-sac that you don't even notice. They're super gone here. Like, it would have been cool to have some of the kids hanging around and maybe they could have their dialogue change from mission to mission. It's a little thing, but it would have gone a long way. As for the actual levels, I can't really complain. They look like areas that would be in the Ed and Eddie world, so there's not much to be mad about. I'm hitting on the visuals, but what about the gameplay? You guessed it, bad too. It has a Sonic Hero system where the three Ed boys are working in tandem. Wait, hold on, that kind of works, right? Sonic is Eddie, Tails is Double D, and Knuckles is Ed. Okay, it's a little bit of a reach and the abilities don't fully translate, but if you don't think about it, it makes perfect sense. You have to switch between them to achieve different things. It's almost like a puzzle, except they always tell you who's up, so you don't have to think about it too hard. Double D is to hit things from a distance and operate dangerous machinery. Eddie can get to higher places, throw useless stink bombs, and can have all three people walk on narrow passages, and Ed will be used most of the time, honestly. He breaks obstacles and he can move really fast to also break said obstacles. He also has the best basic attack, so I always used him to fight enemies, which didn't even fully work because the hitboxes are jank and I'm getting a little mad just thinking about it because it killed me a little too much. But I'll come back to it later. Character swapping makes sense for an Ed and Eddie game, but I wish there was a little more going on with each character. At worst, it feels needless because there are times where you could tell that I want you to switch to make it feel justified. 
Remember how I said that Eddie can be used for narrow passages? Uh, there's no point to it. You can just walk one by one, but they make it so the computer physically can't do it. It's dumb and it ruins my speedrun aspirations. So for the actual game, I could break it down to like three parts. There's the fighting sections, the puzzles, and the interactions with the other kids for lack of a better word. Let's start with the fighting. I hate it and it pisses me off. It's pretty simple. You just spam your attack and hope you don't get hit in return. To make it even worse, sometimes I can't even tell if I hit the enemy because it would seem like the enemies don't react at all. There's no hit stun or anything, so you really gotta do a touch and go strat, which sucks because I really don't want to deal with it most of the time and that just makes the combat longer. Crocodiles are the bane of my existence because they have more health than the other enemies and they hit like a crocodile. Why are there crocodiles in the quota sack anyway? Did Eddie put them there? That scammy bastard. But the demon spawn that lives in my attic are the clingy enemies, uh, the spy and the squirrels. If they touch you, which will most likely happen, they stick to you like glue and deal damage over time. While this is happening, you cannot switch your characters and you cannot use your powers. It's super annoying because half of the time I don't even recognize one of these little devils that lashed onto me and I'm like sparing my moves wondering why it isn't working. As for getting them off of you, you would think that attacking would work, but nope, it's jumping. And maybe I'm really dumb, but jumping doesn't even fully work. Sometimes they fall off, other times they hold on for dear life. It sucks. Now let's talk about the puzzles. It's definitely hit or miss, as in it's either really easy or I'm spending way too long trying to figure out what I needed to do because my brain turned to mush. Funny story, I don't have the footage for all the levels because I got so stuck in a section, mostly because I missed the cutscene seeing as I wasn't paying attention, I always had the game to look up what to do. Turns out that froze my recording and I didn't realize until the end of the game. So there's like an hour of footage with the sound of the game being played over a pause screen, which is fun. But back to the puzzles, they're pretty simple. Most of them boil down to find thing, put that thing somewhere else, and go on your way. The other element of it is that you need to use the right ed for the situation. It's never hard to tell because if you're using a character, the object for that puzzle will glow in the character's color. The only one that tripped me up on this front was Eddie because I barely used him and didn't realize he might be the answer to a puzzle. With that said, they started doing a lot of puzzles that involve Eddie carrying some contraption over a narrow passage, which is fine, but I slipped a lot more than I probably should have. It's very unforgiving in that regard. All in all, I like the puzzles in the sense of it would have been funny if it was in the show, like carrying the batteries to this makeshift scary ass power center. Who put this here? Rolf? I think he made the whole setup, but nah, how does he know how to set this up? Who helped him? Was it Johnny? Fucking Johnny. Uh, sorry. Uh, anyway, the puzzles are only cool as an idea, but the execution is pretty bad. It's just really repetitive and meant to pad out runtime, especially when you have to keep switching between the characters for random stuff. Finally, you have the interactions with the cul-de-sac kids, which did end up being my favorite part of the game. Sure, it's not a high bar to cross, and it was mostly because it was quick and obvious what I needed to do, but still, favorite part of the game. So I know I said that it was interactions with the cul-de-sac kids, but it's really just Kevin and Rolf, uh, Jimmy and Johnny too, kind of, but their interactions were puzzles and I don't count those. I get Kevin, but damn, Rolf is a certified hater in this game. So for these sections, you get the chance to do something unique in the level. It's a nice breath of fresh air from the madness you have to go through before it, except for Kevin's basketball challenge, uh, that one was a mess. There's not much to say about these other than that they are fine, unless the physics of the game screw you over. <laughs> Sneaking <laughs> segment. <laughs> My favorite one of these was racing Rolf on his makeshift racetrack. It was kind of stressful because the ground kept falling in front of me, which was kind of spooky. Yeah, I don't know why we're trusting Rolf in the first place, but okay. One other thing I haven't really talked about are the actual levels. I will say it's alright. When you initially jump into a level, it's pretty nice. The setting of Ed and Eddie transfers fairly well to a video game format. It's colorful and pleasant to look at. The thing is though, as the levels drag on, you start to notice that it's pretty samey throughout the entirety of the level. For example, in the spooky house that the Kankers use as a love dungeon level, they were showing me where I have to go, but I didn't know where that was because that bookshelf looks like every other bookshelf and I would get lost for 10 minutes in despair and have to look up a guide, which is why I lost half of my footage. All in all, I really don't like this game. The saving grace of it was that it wasn't that long. Uh, it was like three hours at most. And a lot of that was me fucking around, slamming Ed's face into whatever would give him brain damage the fastest. Look, all I'm saying is that if you take anything from this video, let it be this. Don't play this game. Just watch the show, but I feel like you know that already. Well, saying this once again, but if you liked the video, maybe thought it was funny or something, leave it a like, it helps out a lot. Also, what other games should I look at? I've been working on the Harry Potter games and ooh, that's a doozy. Also, subscribe so you don't miss out on when we don't post videos. No, no, we're actually, actually, actually working on getting back to being consistent, uh, like a video a week or something. But before you go bullying the Ed boys, have a good day.